Uh, I want to welcome you to the annual Women's Narratives Project panel. I'm Maureen Mahoney. I'm dean of the college here at Smith and one of the directors of the project. The project, part of the new Center for Work and Life, provides opportunities for Smith students to reflect on your own life goals. This is easier said than done, it occurs to me. There are many impediments to doing this, that is, reflecting on our life's goals. First, serious reflection takes time and some structure. Few of us feel we have permission to focus on our goals, let alone enough time. And even if we do set aside time, we may not know exactly how to do it. Second, life's goals are very elusive, fluid, and multiple. Just when you think you've got one, you change your mind or an obstacle appears in your way. And perhaps the hardest part of all is determining what is your own. Expectations for you come from all directions, from teachers, professors, institutions, families, cultural norms, gender stereotypes, and most powerfully, mothers and fathers, who often channel all of those other expectations and direct them at you with great love and laser focus, all the while saying, I only want what's best for you. <laughs> and meaning it. I know, I'm a parent. Locating yourself in the midst of all this is the project of a lifetime. Getting centered is not so easy. At Smith, we encourage you to take time to acknowledge this project of shaping your own life and to think systematically about it. That's what the Women's Narratives Project is all about. One of the best ways to reflect about your own story is to hear the narratives of others who are willing to talk about the journey so far. Today's panel is about resisting convention, narratives of passion and purpose. Now, as dean of the college, I have heard many, many commencement speeches. And many, many of them exhort graduates to follow their dreams and passions. And every time I hear this, I think to myself, but what if you don't have a passion? How do you get one? I'm not sure of the answer to this, but I'm pretty sure it has to do with having the confidence and freedom to be honest with yourself about who you are and to resist the powerful forces of others' expectations for you. This is not to say that others' recognition of who you are, their acknowledgement of your strengths and talents is not one essential way to discover our own passions. Another is to be inspired by the struggles of women who have gone before you and are generous enough to speak about it. That's what today's panel is all about. Before I turn this over to our panel, I want to call attention to a January workshop sponsored by the Narratives Project. It's called Eat, Write, Talk. It's for juniors and seniors. It lasts for three and a half days, and it's an opportunity to work with other students on exactly the issues we raise today. It's also fun, really. If you are a junior or a senior, I urge you to take one of the flyers. This is what they look like, and they're on the table over there, along with some nifty other doodads that you might want to have. Uh, and apply for the workshop. I al also urge you to check out the Center for Work and Life. The website is a source of lots of information to help you navigate your life while you are busy being a student. We also have these buttons. I'm proudly wearing one. It says, Get Centered. Uh, and it has the uh, web address of the Center for Work and Life, which has, as I say, lots of great information for you. So now, it's my very great pleasure to introduce Dean of Religious Life, Jennifer Walters, who's the co-director of the Narratives Project, who will in turn introduce our panelists. Thank you. So I will be the uh, cruise director, uh, moderator for this um, hour or so that we have together. And the structure of our time together will be uh, I will introduce briefly our uh, honored guests today. Each of them will speak for about 10 minutes or so uh, about in response to this uh, theme of narratives of passion and purpose. And then we'll have some questions among the, uh, I'll ask the questions, a few questions, and then we'll open it up to uh, student um, questions and comments. And so they will uh, come to the podium in the order that I 
introduce them, but I'll introduce them all at once. So uh, to my immediate right is Dar Williams, who began, began playing guitar at nine, and by the age of 11 was writing songs. We probably were writing songs when you were three, but you became a songwriter uh, at 11. <laughs> After studying theater and religion, thank you very much, uh, at Wesleyan <laughs> University, Dar moved to Boston in 1990 to try out a career in theater. She worked as a stage director, and while she was doing that, she was also writing songs, taking singing lessons, and soon became part of a then thriving uh, and creative acoustic and folk scene in Boston and Cambridge. She recorded her first album, The Honesty Room, while living here in Northampton. She's a songwriter whose writing captures the complexity of human life and women's lives in particular. Her songs explore gender identity, politics, spirituality, compassion, loss, friendship, and love. She has spent a great deal of her life touring and performing with many other artists, including the Neils, Sean Colvin, Joan Baez, Katie Curtis, and others. She's just released, I think, your 11th album around there, a uh, two-disc retrospective entitled uh, Many Great Companions. To her right is uh, Carolina Miranda, a Smith graduate, class of 1993. She's a freelance writer and editor based in New York, where she contributes articles on travel, culture, and the arts for a variety of national and regional media, including Time, Art News, Travel and Leisure, Lonely Planet, the New York Times, and Fast Company. She's also a regular contributor on cultural topics at WNYC, the public radio affiliate in New York City. As part of her freelance work, she's written features on the presence of graffiti art in international arts institutions, architectural pedagogy in Southern California, and the burgeoning food scene in Peru. Prior to working as a freelancer, Carolina worked at Time Magazine. During her time there, she covered education, arts, and social issues. And she was part of the reporting team that revealed uh, certain problems with FEMA director Michael Brown's resume in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. She was named one of eight fellows in the USC Annenberg Getty Arts Journalism Program for her cultural blog, seamonster.net. And in January, the New York Times named her one of the people to follow on Twitter. So you've got options for a relationship of that sort <laughs> uh, with Carolina. And to her right is Linnell Moyes, poet laureate of Northampton, also a graduate of the MFA program at Smith in playwriting in 2004. She's an extraordinarily multifaceted artist who has been recognized for her poetry, spoken word performances, having won several poetry slams, playwriting, acting, and visual art. Linnell and fellow actor Carla Mosley, you may remember uh, since it happened last week, uh, <laughs> performed Expatriate, her critically acclaimed two-woman play with an all vocal music at Smith uh, at John Green last week as part of our Ortelia Cromwell Day events. Her writing has been published in a number of anthologies, including Word Warriors, 35 Women Leaders in the Spoken Word Revolution, and We Don't Need Another Wave, Dispatches from the Next Generation of Feminists, and Brassage, an anthology of poems by Haitian women. I uh, invite you to welcome all of our panelists and Dar Williams up to the podium.